Plans to close almost every railway ticket office in England have sparked outrage from campaigners. Only booths in the very busiest stations will stay open and this prompts fears that disabled people, the elderly and tourists will be the hardest hit. Joining me now, Peter Pendle. Hi, Peter, the Interim General Secretary at the TSSA Union and Edmund Caldercott, founder of the ticketing website Trainhugger. Hello to both of you. Let's start with you, Peter. You're here in the studio. It's been a busy day for you. You've been talking about this all over the place. Um, is this a inevitable? Is it something that had to happen or do you feel that it could have been avoided? Yeah, it's been one of those days today. So um, did, it have to, did it have to happen? Um, I, I think we accept that change uh, changes is necessary. Um, we don't think that all of the ticket offices should be should be closed. We certainly don't want them. We don't think um, uh, we don't think the travelling public uh, want the want the ticket offices uh, closed. And we're really hoping that they'll get behind the campaign during the consultation uh, to make their views very very clearly clearly known. We think that this is just a, uh, another attempt by the government to um, to save to, to save money. And of course, there's very real impacts on our members that work in uh, work in ticket offices. So, it, it, two reasons for us that we're very much a, uh, against the changes in the way that they're being proposed. I mean, have the government said a couple of things? One is that most people have booked their tickets online these days, so they don't really need a ticket office. Uh, and the other is that the people who work in ticket offices will be deployed elsewhere. Well. How many will be deployed elsewhere? One of the things that we did earlier on in the year is we reached an agreement with the rail delivery group uh, and through that the train operating companies. And one of the things we said, we, we said we're against the, uh, the closure of ticket offices, but part of the deal was we wouldn't, we wouldn't take industrial action in order to, uh, as part of a campaign, um, uh, to, to stop, the, stop the closures. We said we would talk. And part of the deal for that was that, firstly, there'd be no compulsory redundancies by, uh, until December 2024. There'd be um, voluntary severance and redeployments would be, would be consulted. Now, there was also a two-year pay deal as, uh, as, as part of the package. We signed up to that. Mm. We stopped the industrial action. Five months later down the road, this morning we get called into a meeting. The agreement is torn up. Wow. They say they're throwing it out of the uh, uh, out, out of the window. By the time I got back from my meeting at eight thirty with the rail delivery group, mm -hmm. I had half a dozen emails from the train operating companies uh, issuing section one eight eight notices. And section one eight eight notices are the notices that you have to put out for a redundancy consultation. How can we trust mm. uh, 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 employers? When they do that, that two years down the line, they're not then going to make all of those people they've redeployed and meant to be walking around on stations, not going to make them redeploy. Yeah, well, that's not just a rhetorical question, no. is it, after what's happened today? Let's talk to Edmund Caldercott about this, founder of the ticketing website Train Hugger. Edmund, you feel comfortable and cool about the ticket offices being closed down all over the country? Uh, no, I wouldn't say I feel comfortable or cool. Uh, I mean, no one wants job losses but uh, my perspective is, is a very different one uh, and it's about the customer experience mm -hmm. so uh, what is best for the customer so I don't really have a particular view on on the industrial dispute I don't know any any of the details what is best for the customer then so I, I think what what is best for the customer so for nine out of ten customers they've already decided so the best thing for them is to buy online uh, and there are lots of advantages to buying online. So most of them are around information and also you get a cheaper ticket. So that cheap ticket is important because one of the arguments for ticket offices is that uh, it helps the elderly and passengers with disabilities, but they have to pay a ticket premium, which seems really unfair. So secondly, the argument for ticket offices is sort of informational, but um, ticket offices don't have a lot of the information that passengers with disabilities need. So, for example, uh, if I'm travelling, I, I, I need to know are the lifts working at, the des at my destination station? Uh, and if the journey is delayed, I, I need to know uh, if the new station that I'm now travelling to has got working lifts. Now, ticket office is not going to help me with that. So ticket offices are becoming sort of catch-all solution to complex problems which are solved by technology so the modern modernization of the railways isn't just about rolling stock and track it's uh it's about the customer experience and people expect the same customer experience on on trains that they are having in other 
digital aspects of their lives. Let's give Peter a chance to respond. Well, um, he talks about the, um, the nine out of 10. One of the things we're very interested is, in is the, the one out of 10. Mm. Uh, it's not quite nine, nine out of 10. It's, a, it's about 15% in booking offices and then there's ticket machines. So it's not, uh, it, it's not on, online. But, but let me give you a couple of examples. So, so my mother is disabled. Um, she hasn't got a smartphone and she's got sight problems. So when she goes to buy uh, a ticket, she needs to go to, to a, a booking office. Now, the answer will be, uh, well, there'll be someone on the, on the platform by the ticket machines that will be able to help her. And I'm sure that's fine some of the time. But if she wants to catch a train at half past eight in the morning, then she's, she, she, be, there'll be a queue, she'll be stressed. A, another example, my, my, my granddaughter and my two um, great grandchildren recently came down to visit me. I, I, I live in Swansea. They came down in, on, on the train. Um, because of flooding at Swindon, the trains weren't running. Where did they go for the advice? <laughs> they went to the ticket office. The person in the ticket office said, you have to go via Cheltenham and Gloucester and, and, and whatever. They wouldn't, have been, they wouldn't have got to me if it, if, if it wasn't for that. Now, no one's saying that we don't need to, to bring it up to the, 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 the 21st, uh, 21st century. What, what I can't understand is if, um, uh, if you go into a supermarket and they've got the checkout tills, they still have the tills for people to, to pay. Even on the stations, if you go into the news agents on the, on the stations and they have the self-service tills, they still have someone behind the counter. Now, if those uh, commercial organisations in the same places can, can have people there, I don't understand why all of the ticket offices um, uh, that need to be closed. Well, I appreciate you both joining me on this subject. Thank you very much indeed. Let me